Hi, my name is Teal, and I'm your host for the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast, where we share stories of amazing women who live in our communities. My hope is that you will feel encouraged and inspired after listening to each episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Be Amazing podcast here on SweatNet. I'm your host, Seal, and I'm so excited you've joined me today. This is episode 52, and before I share who my guest is, let's talk about the Be Amazing weekend happening on October 15th and 16th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our title sponsor is Strong Fitness Magazine, and Paul Bucetta is coming to take all the photos. That's right. He is our photographer for the weekend, so you don't want to miss this. I want you to bring your tribe, bring your group of your group of fitness friends, bring your girlfriends, like whoever it is for you that's your community and your tribe, bring them. This is a great opportunity to bond, to share an incredible experience, to make new memories, and just freaking have fun. We have all kinds of events happening. We have the Be Amazing 5K Walk Run, Benefiting Girls on the Run. We have Miss Be Amazing Bikini for those that want to compete. We have the Be Amazing Showcase, which this is for you. If you're a trainer or a coach, this is for you too. This isn't just about your clients taking the stage. This is for you as well. This is a great opportunity to celebrate everyone's journey. And then backstage, you're hanging out, watching everyone go on stage, having such a good time, listening to all the amazing stories, and then Paul's back there with you taking all the photos. So you're going to walk away with all these memories. Like you don't want to miss that. And then to end it all, we have the Be Amazing Gala, which is one big celebration, one big party. It's dinner, it's dancing, and we have special entertainment. Are you ready? It's the Men in Bras Runway Show. We have 11 men taking the runway, wearing a bra that's been designed by a local artist or group of volunteers. This is all to bring awareness and raise money for Carolina Breast Friends here in Charlotte. So you don't want to miss it. Make sure you go to BeAmazingWeekend.com right now. You can register for one event. You can register for all events. We cannot wait to celebrate you and your tribe and look forward to seeing you there. Now it's time to introduce my next guest, Janelle Montero, wife, mother, business owner, and coach. Janelle shares how her love of athletics and pageants as a young girl turned into a passion for weight training and fitness competitions as a young woman. Her love for lifting weights and competing on stage eventually led Janelle to her career as a personal trainer, coach, and gym owner after being laid off from her PR job during the recession of 08. The layoff turned out to be a blessing, as Janelle has found her calling in helping women along their journey of self-discovery and self-actualization through fitness, nutrition, and mindset. You do not want to miss this discussion as we reminisce about the early days of fitness competitions in a time before it was actually cool for women to be lifting weights. Janelle is a perfect example of how the sport of fitness has helped so many women become ambassadors for women empowerment because they were able to find personal empowerment along their journey as a fitness competitor. Stay tuned for this incredible conversation with Janelle. Okay, welcome to the show, Janelle. I'm so glad to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, and we go way back. I don't even know how many years it's been. Like I was thinking about that. I was like, how long have I known Janelle? Because we competed, I don't know, is it, it's been over 10 years, right? Yeah, it has to have been. Yeah, because yeah. I, I started competing 15 years ago. So I don't know when you got into it, but we're dating ourselves. It was a long <laughs> ass time. And so much has changed, like in the fitness industry. I always like laugh because I'm like, oh yeah, I started competing and we had to weigh like two piece, two pieces and one pieces. Like everything's changed so much in fitness. Like it's just crazy. It is. It's not even the same. And we were working out when it wasn't cool. <laughs> yeah, you got that, guys. We were the we were the people that put you on the map with these weights, girls. Like no one lifted weights back then. <laughs> no. Nobody thought it was cool. Everybody looked at you as you, that you were like weird, that that's where you wanted to spend your time with the gym. And now it's like the thing to do, which is so awesome. I absolutely love yeah, it. Totally. And I always remember like being in the gym and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm training for a fitness competition. They're like, oh, you bodybuild? And I was like, sure, if that's what you want to call it. But like, no. <laughs> that was always the case. They didn't, and then you have to explain it. And then it's like, well, have you ever seen ESPN and they have the routines and the, you know, go through all of that. So um, now it's, it's really neat to see how much it has, ex like how it's expanded and, and all the growth. And we're going to get into more conversation about that. But before we do, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. 
So I started competing way back when, like we just talked about. And then um, in 2008, when the market crashed, I kind of switched careers into personal training full time. So I was doing public relations and, you know, doing the whole what you should do out of college thing. Go to you go to school for something, you go into that career. Right. And then like life just switched me into another gear. And when I got laid off, it was like the, I say now, like it was the best thing that could have happened to me because it put me into my passion. And I would have never realized that should life not have happened that way. So, um, you know, I thank the universe for aligning me with fitness. And at the time I had just started to kind of get into personal training on the side as a hobby. And then I realized how much I loved it. And um, so I, I started personal training and then I opened my own facility. Now it's been seven years in this facility. So um, and coaching girls obviously was a big part of that. Um, not just the, the fitness facility but I coached girls online before uh, it was kind of even cool nowadays with social media there's so many online coaches but I've been online coaching for 10 plus years now so the fact that that has been um, you know big piece of my life has has just evolved into so much more so yeah I own a um, facility in Middleton Massachusetts so we're just north of Boston but we do a lot of online programming like I said like that was kind of my bread and butter for a long time before I even had the facility so um, I was lucky enough to use the funds that I made online and and make it into a reality here in the facility that's so awesome and then you have a little girl as well Yes, I do. Yes, I have a husband who I've been with for 15 years. So when we first met, I was just getting into competing. So he's kind of seen, I'm like, if you could survive that, we could survive anything. <laughs> we joke about it. But yeah, so um, and we have a three year old daughter. So um, yeah, it's been it's been quite the ride. That's awesome. Well, let's go back a little bit. When did you first fall in love with fitness? So when I was in college, so when I went, I always played sports, but I was never really like the star athlete, if you will. I was just like the real cheerleader, the motivator, like on all my sports teams, I was always on teams. Um, I played soccer, basketball, I did spring track, so softball. So that was kind of my jam. And then when I went to college, I didn't compete anymore. Um, but I was in, I was in pageants from a young age. So I did like the whole beauty pageant thing from the age of 10 to like 22. So then when I was like in college, I really got into weights and I like just loved how strong they made me feel from, you know, a, a mental perspective, but also just helping me realize like what I was capable of. It was kind of so cool for myself to see the growth that I had in mindset along with the growth in my physique. So like the two really went hand in hand. And when I was in the gym and the weight room in college, like I said, like we were talking about how it wasn't cool to lift weights back then. So now like I was getting girls like asking me, oh, what's that move that you're doing? Oh, can I work out with you? Like it was really cool to see how other people were motivated by what I was doing just by being like in the presence of it. Right. So it in challenge challenge them to do more than just the treadmill as well. So I kind of got like this little group of, of people together in college that we would all work out together. And it was really motivating for me, but I was so inspired to like help other people. And that's really where I realized my passion for fitness. And when I graduated college, I made a point to myself to kind of look into fitness competitions because, um, in the pageant world, I was kind of seen as having too much muscle, which is so weird. Nowadays, it wouldn't be looked at like that, but back then it was. Um, and so I was like, well, screw this. I like this body. Like, this is the body I, I like. I've been working hard for these muscles. I don't want to not have them. So I was like, what can I do? And I researched, like I had seen on ESPN Fitness America and um, started researching that and then came across a coach and it was it from there when when um I I lined with some women that were into that I was just like oh this is this is it like th this is so my my jam I totally agree like that's what did it for me it's like when you find we like all found each other and there was just like this it was awesome because you could talk about fitness and you were all focused on the same thing and we we're all training even though we weren't all together we would be training wherever we lived but when we would come together to competition, it was just like this world. It was just like the coolest thing. And really 
Yeah. And I still, to this day, like it has, it has made, uh, has impacted my life just as much as that has impacted yours. Yeah. And I think it's so awesome to see how all of us that did compete together back then, where we've gone in different directions, but like, we're totally empowering women on so many levels because we've empowered ourselves to actually step out of our comfort zones. And like, now we can help others do the same. And um, because of that, it's just been, I think that we're making such a huge impact even more than we know. And with social media nowadays, we're lucky that we have that because it can go the total opposite way, right? Like you can look at women and be like, Oh, I want to look like her. I want to be like her. And like, no ladies, like do your thing, love who you are and every thing that you have and it's helping women realize that and that's what I've come to find out like like today there was women on the squat rack that stepped up their game because the person before them had the weight on there and they were like well I think I can try it and I'm like yeah I know you can do it I saw you doing close to that weight last week like let me spot you let's do this and then like the empowerment of the other women around them like it's so cool to see women like uplifting women to be strong and not like be fearful of the gym Oh, 100%. And it, and it is really powerful when they're all t- like, if you have some women together in one, you know, in the gym or in one space like that, there's just like this um, girl power thing going on. And it's not even that anything has to be said. It's just knowing that they're there and they're cheering each other on. And then there's like high fives after, which is like awesome. Totally. The energy, like it, you just feel it. You don't even have to like say anything sometimes it's just like being in the presence of the same energy is going to help lift you up and make you want to work harder and, and be better. And then it goes far beyond the gym after that, right? Like once you build the confidence in the gym and like in the skin you're in, like it goes so far beyond that. It goes to the boardroom. It goes to your relationships and in your love life. Like it goes to your being a mom and how you, how you parent and like how you are confident in who you are as a parent. So it goes to on so many other levels that I don't think women understand until they're actually in it and like have, have accomplished the feat of like stepping into their fears in the gym and like accomplishing those and then how it trickles on to the other avenues of their life it really does like it 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 just becomes you just become this stronger person overall uh and the physical it really isn't as much about the physical as it is about the mental and just about well-being uh and really getting to the root of who you are and becoming the better version of yourself i just it's it's awesome and i and i love that that's what I know that's what I've taken away from fitness. That's what drive, you know, that's what drives me is having the group of women, having uh, my place in the gym. Like I can walk into any gym. I feel comfortable and confident and then carrying that to, to anything else I do. We talked a little bit about, you know, 2008 and that's how the gym came about. But when did you really decide to go from athlete to coach? Um, I'd say 2008 is when I broke into like personal training full time. So shortly thereafter, you know, I started to work under the coach that I was under and help her assist her do the posing piece and stuff, because that actually came super easy to me because I was in pageants for so long. So then once I started working one on one with with the clients and posing, I was like, Oh, I love I love this uplifting stuff. Like I, cause when you're in a session to walk and pose, like it's not just about that. Like you're talking about all levels of confidence. Right. So then I started shortly thereafter um, coaching part-time as well um, under the other coach. And then when I broke away, I can't even, I don't know when it was that I actually started on my own coaching wise. But it was, you know, quite a few years later, I I started doing that. So I think it's been about 10 years now because I had the facility for seven and I was at another place before here, um, renting space and um, coaching, coaching uh, women then. So yeah, probably about close to 10 years now coaching. That's so great. And I know that there, I know you're inspiring women all over. Do you, do you have women? Is it just in the States or have you branched international or like where are most of your women from that you work with that you coach? I've only had a few women internationally. Most of them have been in the U.S. um, and tons of them locally, like within like some type of drivable distance, like New England, um, New York, Connecticut, Mass, Maine, um, New Hampshire and and Rhode Island have been like my bread and butter. But I have had like scattered throughout um, the country. 
but I think there's something to be said for like when you can have some type of experience with, with your coach. So nowadays, right, we have Zoom. Like it's so it's so helpful now. You can do coaching calls with your coach via Zoom, but um, the in-person contact is like what a lot of people crave. I feel like and just gets that coaching um, client connection so much more bonded. Um, so I actually love the more in-person stuff. Um, I mean. Yes, obviously, like I can do a lot of remote, but I love to see my clients in person and actually like engage with them in person. Um, I've actually changed the program quite a bit since obviously the beginning. It used to just be like fitness and nutrition. And now I've really worked in the mindset piece because through the years, I noticed that that is the big missing link, like total missing link. If you're coming to me and you just want abs and, um, you know, a pro card, like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give that to you. Like over the years, I learned that that is not what my passion is for. My passion is for someone that wants to really transform from the inside out. And that means learning what it's about, like learning what you want out of life, not just in the gym, but um, really trying to get you more into discovering about yourself, what your wants, need, desires are long term in life. And, you know, how does that fuse into your fitness? So, you know, I've created a self-discovery workbook that I go through with my clients. I have a challenge now that I'm doing called the Conquer Challenge, which in, in, um, totally embraces all of the mindset work. We do Zoom calls on different topics, and it's really helped to transform my, my clients for the long haul. So it's going to help them in the long run, whether they step on the bikini stage or not, like their mindset around fitness and health and nutrition and all that they're capable of has changed immensely. And that's really where, where it, the sweet sauce is for me is the th merging the three things together, the fitness, the nutrition, and the mindset. That's, and that's the whole, like when you're talking about well being, like that's, that's the whole thing right there. Uh, because I think a lot of people, when they originally come to any trainer or any coach, it's like, you know, they want to get from point A to point B. And it's like, I just need training and, and nutrition. And then as you start to get to know the people, you know, get to know the clients, and then you realize there's other things going on. And by by creating that, what you're doing and creating the programming, uh, man, no doubt your clients come out like healthier mind, body and spirit. Yeah, totally. And you know, because I was sick of seeing them crash and burn after. And, you know, having them blame themselves for, you know, gaining weight back, like, okay, for one thing, you hardly gained any weight back, that's normal, like, but the bikini mindset, it can, can be, you know, it, it can be a little unhealthy if you don't go into it the right way. And that's kind of what I've learned through the process over the years was that missing link was causing, causing that hiccup at the end, right? So um, they come back for more. For more shows but just to get the body back and I'm like no that's not what this is about like you need to learn how to sustain a healthy lifestyle and a healthy mindset long term and how can we do that so that's kind of why I really started to look at what helped me throughout my my years of competing and um, what was missing through my years of competing and I started to create that missing link that's awesome. I think that's a huge thing with stage. Uh, I think is there can be a really, uh, the relationship, the relationship that, and I know I went through this competing too, like you have a relationship with food, <laughs> you have mm -hmm. a relationship with training and you have a relationship with the stage and yeah. you get the stage and it's like, and for those of you who have never competed, what happens, you know, you get to a point where like you feel the best, look your best, but it's really just that 24 hour period of, you know, of that moment. And you want to hold on to that, but it's not realistic because you're an athlete and you're competing for that, for that actual, you know, moment. But there is, there is like a healthy way to live all the time and feel good. And so I think that what you're doing for women and how you approach at it is huge. And I think that that's um, a game changer for anybody that wants to compete as an athlete in bikini or, you know, take the stage in a fitness competition or anything like that. Um, the mindset piece is just like, to me, it's, it's everything. Thank you. Yes, I agree. It's like, I like to use the analogy of like, if you're going to get married, right, and you like 
push so hard for this beautiful big wedding, but you actually haven't sat in what the meaning of the marriage is, or you haven't talked to your soon to be husband about your future, or you haven't talked to your soon to be husband if you want kids, like, or where you guys are at mentally, like within the relationship and as individuals, right? So like, what are your goals as individuals? What are your goals as a couple? How are you going to go about this marriage? Where are you going to live long term? What are your future goals? Like if you haven't talked about all that stuff and figured out all that stuff, then the wedding itself isn't going to survive. It's kind of like the same thing. Like you go through the motions of the fitness and nutrition, but then at the end, if you haven't asked yourself all those questions about like, what do I want my, for myself long term? How good do I feel in my own skin? Why do I feel good in my skin? What makes me fear my own skin what makes me feel my best like all of those basic questions um and your limiting beliefs why do you feel that way about your body why do you feel that way about your legs why do you you know like all that stuff then or that food why do you fear that food <laughs> I could go on and on but if you haven't answered all those questions right to get to the end then you're gonna be completely stuck and you're gonna keep repeating the same diet patterns and that's even in life like that's not even talking about bikini shows that's just in life like the the roller coaster ride of diets right that we see all the time oh all the time whether it's whether it's like the latest diet that's going on in hollywood like you know these crash diets that people do or whether it is you're on a specific plan for like a, a purpose such as a show or or a photo shoot or whatever it is but you know, there's so much more to it than that. And I just, I love everything that you're doing and everything that you're about and, and that you've taken your own experience, applied it. And like you said, you've plugged in what was missing because I do feel like, like mindset was not, mindset and well being were not part of, of what we did as, you know, training for shows and things. Not that it would, there would be things that would be brought up and encouragement and inspiration, but there was no, nobody ever talked about like the mindset or, you know, being healthy over like, well, like full well being. And so I love that that's really part of what you do in your training now. And I, you know, they need, they should reach out to you because I think that's, to me, that's, it's huge. I think it's just a, it's, you have, you have found that missing link. And I think that's really big. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate that. And you know, there's a coach for everyone. And I get that through the years, like, you know, I've gone through my bouts of being jealous, because I wasn't coaching everyone. And like, you know, that's just comes with that's, that's honestly, that's ego. Like once I got past that, and like figured out, you know, this is what I'm passionate about. And this is the type of client I want to coach. Like if you're someone that wants to do all three of those pieces and really long-term wise see the results then I'm the coach for you you know but there are other coaches out there that are awesome amazing coaches yeah will they get you to your goal and physique absolutely like there's many that will but that's not just what I'm about so yeah thank you for that no and thank you for bringing that up because there are it you know when we first started in the industry there weren't a lot of coaches again going back you know fitness wasn't a big thing um, people would go to gyms to hire trainers. There wasn't the online piece like there is now. There wasn't the opportunity to train with different people. And I think that the one thing that that uh, goes on is there's this this competition sometimes in the fitness field. And but every there's there is space for everyone, and everyone has something to bring to the table. And I think it's about finding your fit and finding who you fit with. And um, because it becomes a relationship between you and the client. Like it's, it's more than just like, you know, um, you checking a box. Like it's, it's to me, when you work with somebody, it's so much more than that. And so I think I, I love that you even brought that up. Well, let's talk about your fitness goals. Do you have any goals now for yourself? I know it's so crazy, right? Well, I do. Well, for one thing, I've been really trying to be, um, you know, stronger in my body mobility wise has been like key for me. I mean, I've learned my body is in a good place, like fitness wise, like how I look, I feel awesome. Um, but, you know, mobility wise, I'm just trying to work on a few things that I, I still have not fully gotten back post pregnancy. It's been a little bit harder. Um, but uh, I actually do want to have another baby. So we'll probably try to have another baby. Um, and, you know, so that my goal for this pregnancy, the first one was just to like embrace it all and like sit in it and really be like, 
you know, if I didn't want to work out, don't force yourself to work out, like just enjoy the pregnancy as a whole. So like, I just really listened to my body the first pregnancy. Um, for the second one, when it happens, God willing, um, I will work out harder. <laughs> because I'm, I just want to like, I want to keep that mobility because what happened was, you know, I, I did work out, but not like super, you know, not a lot, like not a lot. Um, I gave myself grace with that. And then post-pregnancy too, gave myself grace with that. And I just, I want to continue with it like throughout. So that's my fitness goal for myself is to just be more, um, you know, really work on keeping mobility through pregnancy and still maintaining like four or five weight days. Like, and I only did like two to three the last time and I never um, really, you know, I would just walk and stuff, basic cardio. So I would like to keep my cardiovascular health up and mobility throughout this next one when it happens. Um, and then, you know, I never say never to another show, but I, I don't know if it's in the cards. I have so much passion now for helping other women that for me, it would just be to like bounce back quicker than the first one because I tried harder. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. So fitness wise, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't have like any like super PR goals or anything like that. I did all that for so many years and now it's just more like just doing what I feel best doing, like what makes me happy and weights makes me happy, like not forcing myself to do anything that doesn't feel like feel fun to me I just try to do anything that like feels fun to me nowadays I love that and I love how like you are going with the flow of it so like you're you know like you said you love training women working with women uh, and seeing them reach their goals but then at the same time you're like but hey you know the window you know it's open the door's open so if I decide to do another show <laughs> like I think that's great I think just you know, realizing where your, you know, where your focus is, but also allowing yourself to, to, um, to do something if you decide to do it, you know, I love that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I did think like after the first, after Liliana, I did think to myself, I wanted to compete again because I have a passion for the stage. Like, I just love it. I love it. Yes. I like being the center of attention. Most people don't, I do. So like, I don't mind that. And, um, you know, because my mindset's different, I don't care if I win or like am last. I don't care. I would have just wanted to do it for myself. So like back in the day, I would be like, no, I would never step on stage unless I was completely perfect. But now it's like, no, I, you know, I would just want to do it for fun and to get on stage. So I never say never. Yeah, you know, I love that. Vision where your child walks out with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, I, here, and here's the thing, like, I, I mean, the best part of competing, because I'm like you, I love the stage. I love performing. That was like the best. Like, I always love that. I'll never shy away from that. But I think the best part was the fun of doing it with other women. Like, it was just your part of this like world. And it was just super fun. Like, we just had a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's not like nothing other, like when you do it with a team or do it with some friends and you have fun with it. And it's just like, you met your individual goal together, no matter what the, you know, independently, but and together. So like, no matter what the outcome is, like, that was the funnest part. Like you never left a show. I know I didn't, I never left a show feeling like I didn't um, succeed because even if I didn't place, like I had so much fun, I reached some type of goal and like, most likely one of my friends won. So it was like a celebration. <laughs> I felt the same way. Like, cause I, I'll hear people talk about shows now and it's like, their goal is like, I want my pro card and I want to win. And I was like, man, it was never like that for me. Like I just loved the experience. I loved the team experience. And so, um, you know, it's different for everyone, but I, I have so many fond memories and that's why it's so fun talking about it and reminiscing because it makes you flash back to those days. And um, no, just like you're doing because like, I feel like it's going to be just like that, like empowering women to like be comfortable in their own skin and like, just like supporting one another, prepping with one another, like it will be amazing. So be amazing. Be amazing. Yes. <laughs> That's and I can't wait because I, I know that a bunch of our teammates are coming back together and, and we're going to have such a blast uh, being together that weekend in October, but um, for all the women that plan to to join us, I think that it's going to be an experience like nothing they've ever, like, even if they've done shows before other things, this will be unlike anything that they've experienced. And it'll be because of 
women like yourself that'll be there, um, that, you know, have a true passion and love um, to lift and inspire other women. That's what's going to make it so much fun. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing, like, they don't know, like, I feel like a lot of competitors now just don't get the same experience that I had. And it's unfortunate, like that we had. Um, and, and it's really unfortunate. But if we can change that, then hey, <laughs> yes, girl, game changing, right? game changing happening. We're going to be game changing it. This yeah, is awesome. it. Yes, completely. All right. So tell us what is your absolute favorite workout right now? Um, my favorite workout right now. So I always love lifting back. Like back is like my favorite because I feel strong when I do it and I actually have a pretty strong back. So when I, I lift back, I feel like super strong and powerful. Um, but of course I love lifting legs and glutes because of the result <laughs> in not being <laughs> walk a few days later. Um, so like I always feel it. So I love that. Um, but actually doing it in the moment, I don't love it. So <laughs> I actually love back, back and shoulders are like my jam because they're like my, my, uh, my, my best spots, I guess you would say my, um, yeah, they're like my, my better muscle groups. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all have our favorites and usually it is legs and glutes that I hear. So it's, it's so cool to hear you say, no, like back is my, you know, my jam. That's where, that's where it's at working on is getting my mobility back with my with my strength in my lower half um it's never been a, a good thing for me like um an easy thing I should say it's never been an easy thing for me to get you know toned legs I mean I've had like decent legs in the past but I've had to work super hard for it um I have you know some knee issues or whatever so I've had to work through that and then having the baby my hip was all off so just like mobility wise like I think that you know it's not about going super heavy anymore for me it's just making sure that I'm consistent and doing it like twice a week like I gotta hit it twice a week and and be consistent with it and you know, the results will come but um it's not my favorite <laughs> <laughs> I love to train other people doing it but not so much myself <laughs> Yeah. So myself, no, but back. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, do you have a favorite song on your playlist? Like one that you, that like pumps you up for going to the gym for maybe that leg day that you're not crazy about? So I don't have like a specific song. I definitely go through vibes with my music. Um, I love house music and, but when I lift, when I lift, I listen to a lot of soca like Caribbean music because it just puts me in like the happiest mood like I can't help but feel island vibes and like happiness and like there's some hard beats too like it's a good combo so like when I lift I actually listen to Soka a lot because it just puts me in like such a good mood um so that's my mood boosting music for working out but um randomly here and there like if I need to get into those leg lifts you know a little like hardcore rap will do it <laughs> on soca would be would probably awesome. be, yeah yeah I love that because it's very different um it's funny when I ask people that question because I'll get different answers and but I have not heard that one yet I know <laughs> Most of the, yeah no it's like I, I think I was meant to live in the Caribbean at some point in my life I yeah. will <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's your future yeah <laughs> do you have anything else on your heart that you want to share with our listeners I would say that you just need to continuously, to be amazing, you have to learn how to be authentically you, whatever that means. If that means speaking up more, if that means doing more of what you love, if that means saying no more, whatever it is, like you need to learn how to be more authentically you. And in doing that, you're going to help build your confidence in little baby steps and that makes a big change for the mindset so I always say like whatever you know come up with some routines and rituals that you can accomplish every day to make yourself feel more fully you and live more in joy and then you're going to learn how to be more authentically you and in doing so you build that confidence one little baby step at a time so um you know and that's it comes in the gym too like when you're working out and you hit a new goal with lifting or squatting or um you know you you ran a mile whatever it may be like that's gonna push you to 
stroke that confidence muscle a little bit more, do it. So you can actually be more confidently you. Oh, it's perfectly said. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I so appreciate you taking time to be on the podcast today because I know you're really busy, but, and I appreciate all that you're doing for the women uh, that you coach, but also just for what you've said today, I know will inspire and encourage women as well. Where can people find you? Yes. So you can find me on Instagram at Janelle Montero, M-O-N-T-E-I-R-O. And then you can find me on my website is JanelleMontero.com. And through that, you can find my gym and stuff, Body Ambition, website for my gym, BodyAmbition.com. But Janelle Montero would be the best way to reach me on Instagram. I'm always on DMs. I am on Facebook too, obviously, but um, always on DMs and stuff. So if you guys have questions and want to reach out, say hello, pop on in. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to seeing a bunch of you guys at the Be Amazing Weekend. Yes, in October. Can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for joining me today. If you like the podcast, please like and share this with other women in your life. You can find out more about SweatNet on SweatNet.com or follow them on Instagram at SweatNet and SweatNet Charlotte. You can follow me personally on Instagram at It Seals Smart. Stay tuned for the next episode of the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast.